back to foundations and future of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and massively multi-user online role-playing games. And if you could please all turn on your cameras, that would be great for recording. As always, I take your agreement to be recorded. And particularly <clears throat> the agreement of today's speaker, Yi Hee-jun. Hello, Hee-jun. Hee-jun, today we'll speak about, my bad, history of artificial intelligence. So without further ado, I think we're now everybody's ready. Once again, please try to turn on your camera. And uh, now I pass the word and microphone to Hee-jun. And you should be able to share your slides and start your presentation. Okay. Can you see my, my slide? Okay. Hello. Hello, my name is Hee Jun Lee, and today I'm going to talk about history about artificial intelligence, uh, which is some of you guys might familiar with it, but I, I will uh, keep through it, keep through it uh, from, from beginning. Uh, this is my ta uh, table of contents. I will start from very beginning, which is science fiction, AI in science fiction. And then I will end up with a uh, state of art uh, deep learning technologies. First of all, I will try to introduce the AI in AI in science fiction. In the first half of the 20th century, science fiction familiarized the world with the concept of artificially intelligent robots. It began with the heartless Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz. Uh, and continued with the humanoid robots that impersonated Maria in Metapolis. By the 1950s, we had a generation of scientists, mathematicians, and philosophers with the concept of artificial intelligence, which is AI, uh, culturally assimilate, assimilated with in their minds. Alan Turing uh, pro proposed the concept of the imitation game that identifies which opponent, which opponent is A uh, among X and Y. X and Y try to state themselves as uh, I am A. And if, if we change X into the robot and set Y as a human, then this concept becomes the Turing test, which is evaluation for artificial intelligence. The Turing test was designed to, form, designed to fool humans with machine intelligence of natural language understanding skills. The history of AI, however, the computer was too expensive in those uh, old area. The history of AI cannot be presented apart from the evolution of computers. During the 1950s, the computer is huge and slow. Uh, during that time, buying computers did not make sense, so they leased the computers. It cost about, about $200 million per month. It is uh, considered the inflation, but still a huge number. But our Gordon Moore, which is who, uh, who the founder of Intel, improved the computation speed and transistor in the single chipset year by year. This is more slow. And the, the improvement, the computational power keeps help to uh, evolution of AI. And second, uh, now we can see the first form of AI in, AI in academic field. The conference that started everything was held in this early very stage of AI. It is called uh, Dartmouth Summer Research Project on AI's Artificial Intelligence in 1956. Uh, AKA DSRPAI. Ellen Neuer, Cliff Saw, Cliff Saw, and Her Herbert Simon introduced logic scientists, and it was the first program to 
mimic humans' problem-solving skill, which uh, that presented in conference. And the logic scientist program was presented on the DSRP AI. In addition, during the conference, many researchers introduced many other interesting prototypes and version of human level AI. However, they could not find good candidates for general AI framework uh, because they are mostly lack of computation power and they are very beginning of this concept. But during the conference, the researchers have a dream and the motivation to research general AI next 20, for next 20 years. This motivation kept of AI research committee. And this is why this conference in 1956 is considered as a remarkable starting point in academic area. Oh, wait. Oh. Uh -huh. And this is, oh, okay. Oh, uh, and, oh, shit. Um, can you guys, uh, can you guys see my screen is moving? I just froze. I think my internet just froze. Screen does not move, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, yeah, not, now the, is it move? Oh, okay. And internet back up now. Okay. And next section is first, I will introduce our first AI boom. After the DSRPA, AI researches, for, AI researches are fluted as well as the fund of rate fund raised by DARPA and many, orga many other organizations. For one of the remarkable, remarkable algorithm that developed uh, during this period is the backpropagation. The basics of uh, continuous backpropagation were derived by, in the context of cont control theory by Henry Kelly in 1916 and by author Bryson in 1961. They use principle of dynamic programming. And in 1962, Start, no, start, start Dry First published a simpler derivation based on based only on the chain rule, which is we uh, we are very familiar with that. And then uh, suddenly the AI winter is come. The AI and deep learning could not keep up the fundraisers' expectation, as because uh, the impact of this lack of funding limited both DL deep learning and AI researches. Fortunately, they were there were uh, some individuals who carried on the research without funding. Seppo Linema uh, showed the backpropagation works well when works well in deep neural network with his master thesis with Fortran. He wrote this, uh, his Fortran program in his uh, 66 paper, uh, 66 pages master thesis with typewriter, which is very uh, tough, tough job in that area. I'm not sure what uh, this figure means, but uh, some figures showed how the gradient is propagated and it's accumulated and it looks Working fine. It is very uh, incredible. So I I grab it. The grab that figure in here. And the AI winter is just come uh, just gone. And now I'm going to show about second AI boom. Uh, start from from here. Uh, we will show. We will see more much more interesting uh, ideas and products because. Uh, because of this, uh, we Hinton, which is very famous professor and a researcher in AI field, find out the backpropagation on neural network creates interesting connections between neurons, which is which is the connectism, uh, which he, which he, he which means he shows the possibility of connectism in neural network. They demonstrate how weights in neural network trained 
with backpropagation in uh, Nature, Nature, Conference, Nature Paper, 1986. In right side of this slide, you can see the actual, actual detrained weights. And in the trained, trained unit, six, number six, and you can see the neural network could train this Christopher are belong into left side of family tree. This neural network trained with uh, trained to predict the relationship between these uh, between peoples. So they the neural network compare uh, Christopher and Andrew, and and neural network trained as Christopher is in left side, and Andrew are belong into right side because they are far apart from relations, and this shows very uh, interesting uh, result and. And they and researchers think the connectism and backpropagation uh, could could create could uh, could represent information inside of data set. Jan Lukun evaluates CNN uh, conversion neural network with backpropagation on MNIST data set, which classifiers uh, classifies hand list uh, hand written digits with multilayer perceptron and backpropagation. Later, he uh, introduced, oh, in, in 19, 1989, he introduced multi-layer perception with backpropagation. And then he introduced convolutional neural network with backpropagation in 1998. So, <clears throat> so uh, with this LE-Net, this is called LE-Net because Lucun created. Uh, however, the deep learning, deep learning Deep neural network showed good performance, but still they couldn't keep up the research on deep learning field because uh, because of course of dim uh, dimensionality. Larger DNN uh, was hard to compute and organ optimize because of overfitting, computational post, uh, vanishing gradients, and various other problems. Uh, deep neural network showed usually worse optimization costs and results than SVM. Uh, support vector machine and other machine learning algorithms. Curse of dimensionality uh, means how many means many challenges when we try to handle high dimensional data. It's kind of common common quote. So this quote often is cited when we encounter challenges and bugs during expanding the dimension of the system, as well as I as I showed the in dim dim neural network. Uh, Richard, Ber Richard Berman, when considering problem problems in dynamic programming, he mentioned this quote first. So, and then I show the support vector machine, which is a uh, quite good alternative of deep neural network in that area. Uh, support vector mach machine is developed at AT&T Bell Laboratory by Vladimir Babnik research team. The SVM is a very simple and powerful robust AI model. The model beats model outperform many baselines in terms of performance and on two and one class classification tests. We know deep neural network is much, much better than SVM now, but during that day, training deep neural network proper uh, training deep neural network properly was very difficult job. As following problems, so SVM was considered as strong alternative and mainstream of research trend from the 1992. So, so I introduced the alternatives, which is practical and machine learning algorithms. Deep neural network was going down during this period because because of the Spanish gradient problem, mostly. People are struggling with training deep neural network because of vanishing gradient. If we added more layers and layers on deep neural network, we should expect higher accuracy because we increase the complexity of network and that increased complexity should not affect uh, previous performance. But, but in truth, the deep neural network performs worse and worse while adding new layers and new, new models in the model architecture. The reason is that 
deep neural network training relies on backprop and sigmoid activation functions. And backprop with sigmoid activation function could not uh, propagate gradient when propagate gradient converts to zero. In right side, you can see blue line and it is sigmoid. And you can see right a red dot line, which is derivation of sigmoid. So the we accumulate, we multiply and multiply the gradient of sigmoid, you you eventually get zero. So you never you never update the gradient in deeper layer. Uh yeah, deeper layer. So people are trying to use a simpler and more robust model than deep neural networks. For example, support vector machine and decision tree and k nearest neighborhood and k means. Uh, I won't talk about very detail about them, but those are very uh, mainstream in, in during the 1995 and 2000, early of 2000 area. So some people think the learning models are robust enough because they created those kinds of models. And it is, it is to, uh, and they think it is time to engineer the feature extraction. For example, in computer vision field, we use uh, HAAR -H field, a filter or uh, LBP and he historian of oriented gradients. And we can use a scale invariant uh, feature transform. And we can also use a uh, speeded of robust feature, uh, robust feature. Um, so they are basically the method to extract feature from the images, which is kind of a redu dimension reduction technique. Those feature extraction methods are working well with classifiers such as SVM which is support vector machine. Many of you are familiar, familiar with HAAR cascade for object detection, usually used in face recognition in OpenCV library, if you, used, if, if you use that library. And yes, uh, now, now finally, finally we get uh, into the deep learning area era. So let's talk about, let's talk, let's talk about ReLU solves the vanishing gradient. Now, now people can now avoid vanishing gradient problems with Velu. Velu introduced uh, by Alex, Alex in 2011. This research, this research used GPU, and also this research used GPUs for training deep neural network, not like us before researches. Before researches use CPU mostly, and it makes training insanely faster than before. Importantly, many research groups have almost unlimited cash in, uh, because they are Google and Microsoft and Facebook, unlike before in investment during uh, 1970s and 80s. For example, Google invested in deep learning and AI seriously. So they, even they Google acquired a company that research uh, deep learning only, which, which is very famous in mind. And you can see this is the ReLU function. Left side is uh, ReLU function and right side is derivation. And you can see the derivation is one and zero. So you can never converge to zero if we, uh, if we well train the weights. So the weights are activated. So we can now stack the layer finally. However, even with powerful GPUs and clever solution, the human brain is still quite good job on, on classification test, which is, for example, between the Chihuahua and Muffins. You can see the neural network is very struggling with uh, classification of Chihuahua and Muffin because you can see the AI I think Muffin is 50% and other 50% is other classes. So it's they, the model couldn't ensure. And now size, I, and now I think I have to say side story here, because do you know the StarCraft cheat command Operation Sea War? It is mean it means can, we cannot wait any more longer. If we use 
If you use this command in the game, all upgrades done instantly. GPU manufacturers, manufacturers are done doing Operation Seward shit in the real world regarding the computation power. In the right side of this slide, you can see the computation power growth by uh, air, year by year. And uh, you can see 2011 is here. So AlexNet created in this time. And, and these GPU manufacturers improved the, their uh, GPUs and it's going up and up and up and up. And now they are here, uh, 2021, yes, uh, last year. And this year they released new GPU, which is to about 25, 25 times better than last year GPU. So uh, as you can see, GPU is significantly better and better and better before. However, uh, yeah, however, I think they should be faster than uh, this is slow, still slower than AI community growth speed. I will show it. Uh, thanks to clever researchers and evolution of the learning community, including the GPUs and models and frameworks, the performance of state-of-art uh, model getting better and better every day. In bottom side, you can see the classification error, classification accuracy occur, uh, on the ImageNet, which is which is used in AlexNet. So. So you can see here, you can see the result of Alex, Alex uh, in 2011. It is, it was about 68, 63, 64% in top one accuracy. And, and they just, they just now is about like 91 or 92% with uh, mega, mega scale deep neural network, which is um, vision transformer, vision transformer. Mm, yeah. Now let's talk about the big players in deep learning field. Since 2011, AlexNet announced it, many things changed. Tech giants get into deep learning field and they invest billions of money into research. Uh, this investment accelerates deep learning evaluation. For example, Google invest, Google acquired DeepMind and invest they create Inception V3, which is very remarkable image, class, image classification model. And Microsoft Research also, also create very remarkable image, image classification model too. And Facebook Research create the very famous deep learning uh, framework with uh, written in Python, which is called PyTorch. And yeah, also, also the Ooh, yeah. Also, the development environment helps the progression of deep learning area, uh, deep learning field. One of the widely used framework, PyTorch, is developed by a Facebook research, as I told you. And others, for example, there is TensorFlow, Keras, and Cafe, and MXN, and other very tons of frameworks out there. Now, let's now let me show the state of art reach some of state of art results of AI researches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Oh, where 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 is? I found here's some. Have you ever seen a polar bear playing bass? Can you can you hear the sound of the video? Okay. You can improve the sound quality in your settings when oh, sharing. Really? Oh uh, yeah, I can I change to it. Stereo. Okay, I'll optimize for video clip. Painted like a Picasso? Didn't think so. Dolly 2 is a new AI system from OpenAI that can take simple text descriptions like a koala dunking a basketball and turn them into photorealistic images that have never existed before. 
Dolly 2 can also realistically edit and retouch photos. Based on a simple natural language description, it can fill in or replace part of an image with AI-generated imagery that blends seamlessly with the original. It's called inpainting. In January 2021, OpenAI introduced Dolly, a system that could generate images from text, like this avocado armchair. Dolly 2 takes the technology even further with higher resolution, greater comprehension, and new capabilities, like inpainting. It can even start with an image as an input and create variations with different angles and styles. Dolly was created by training a neural network on images and their text descriptions. Through deep learning, it not only understands individual objects, like koala bears and motorcycles, but learns from relationships between objects. And when you ask Dolly for an image of a koala bear riding a motorcycle, it knows how to create that or anything else with a relationship to another object or action. The Dolly research has three main outcomes. First, it can help people express themselves visually in ways they may not have been able to before. Second, an AI-generated image can tell us a lot about whether the system understands us or is just repeating what it's been taught. Third, Dolly helps humans understand how AI systems see and understand our world. This is a critical part of developing AI that's useful and safe. The technology is constantly evolving and Dolly 2 has limitations. If it's taught with images that are incorrectly labeled, like a plane labeled car, and a user tries to generate a car, Dolly may create a plane. It's like talking to a person who learned the wrong word for something. Dolly can also be limited by gaps in its training. If you type baboon and Dolly has learned what a baboon is through images and accurate labels, it will generate a lot of great baboons. But if you type howler monkey and it hasn't learned what a howler monkey is, Dolly will give you its best idea of what it thinks it could be like a howling monkey. What's exciting about the approach used to train Dolly is that it can take what it learned from a variety of other labeled images and then apply it to a new image. Given a picture of a monkey, Dolly can infer what it would look like doing something it's never done before, like paying its taxes while wearing a funny hat. Dolly is an example of how imaginative humans and clever systems can work together to make new things, amplifying our creative potential. Today we can use AI to write poetry, um, compose music. I'm sure you have seen this model in social media or somewhere, such as news. Uh, the model DALI 2 could generate creative images with text input. This model could create, uh, this model created by generative adversary neural network and transformers. And next, also extension of these kind of researches, the model called Coke video also could generate videos from, from nothing or some from the text. Um, these kind of generative models are kind of very trending models in deep learning field now. And I think the current, current the deep learning fields are about how to represent the data and how to uh, how to extract or inter interpolate or uh, interpret interpret the data representation. Yeah, that's all I prepared. And now talk about the take home points and questions. These are summary of today's presentation. First, we had a first AI boom, which which the Logic, scientist, logic theorist and backpropagation was introduced. And next, we have second AI boom. We get early net, which is convolutional neural network with backpropagation and for, and for the researches of a backprop. And also we may include the, some practical machine learning algorithms in this era, era I think such as, for example, the support vector machine and decision trees. Oh, no, not decision trees. It is very old model. And 2011, the state of art deep learning era was began and still going. And the remarkable change was 
could achieve because of the ReLU and deep learning improvements and generative models. And this is, and that was the summary of presentation. And now, talk about the questions. What did you learn about learn on the history of AI? Did you do you think AI is cool or not? And then, what do you think about the future of future of AI? Where do we go? Where should we go? Could we create general AI someday, or will we just end up in industrial automations? And finally, what can you do in AI field, or what will you do with AI? What do you think? What do you want to contribute, or what do you want to use? I think those kind of questions are very inter uh, very interesting, and I'm curious about it. Thank you for listening to the presentation, and this is my bunch of references. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. This was a very interesting presentation and also visually very appealing, put in a lot of effort and it has paid off. Right. So let's now take a short break to kind of digest that. I'm going to set just like three minutes, three minutes break where you are encouraged to think about questions and comments on the content and also questions and comments and feedback on the presentation. And then we'll meet again in three minutes to first discuss the content, also the questions and uh, the take home points that Hijin, Hijun mentioned, right? And then we will discuss uh, the, the presentation and give feedback to that, two separate parts, right? Okay, so no short break, three minutes. So first part, comments about the presentation and maybe some answers to the take home points and take home question. Um, Eugene, how, how about you share the slide with the uh, final comments and questions? Yes, very well. This is the summary. Oh, this. And you had some, yes, okay. questions. Okay. So, how about we first provide some comments about the content, not the quality, but the uh, additions, comments, questions? Anybody has questions? So can I ask some question that is more of the more of the morality like of the using AI and less of the historical part? I would oh, suggest sorry. to save that for the philosophy part, right? Oh, right. Thank you. Next uh, on Thursday, but don't forget the questions. It's, it's good to remember that. Okay. So for example, who of you is uh, attending classes, courses on uh, artificial intelligence or has attended such a course? Could you raise your virtual hand if you have attended um, a course on AI? Or maybe I should ask the opposite, who has not taken any course on AI? Okay, yeah, AI is a big topic these days, right? And there are many courses and many lectures going on, okay. Yes, actually, I, I have a kind of technical question about this um, DALL-E um, AI system that you presented, a very interesting system. And I was curious about the uh, kind of the size, the magnitude, um, and the reason I'm asking is because is if you remember um, the, the story about uh, 
um, AlphaGo winning against Isedol, right? And uh, also before that, there were uh, attempts in trying to beat chess masters in chess, right? And the first time a computer tried to beat a chess master, the computer lost and the chess master won. And then I think one or two years later, it tried again. And this time the computer won and the chess master lost. And if you look quantitatively during this one or two years, the underlying computer power kind of uh, doubled or maybe even quadrupled both in terms of speed according to Moore's law but also in terms of size. And if you recall the technical details of the configuration of AlphaGo used to beat Isedol, that was massive. I mean, um, Google really put in all the money and bought all and combined all the hardware, um, designed uh, custom um, um, support for uh, um, computing devices to accelerate and increase the power. And on top of everything, it also used the database, right? So this was really a lot of computational power if you think about it. And now I'm curious about, uh, maybe you, you remember the, the, the saying, right? Uh, if you fit uh, uh, with three parameters, you can fit an elephant and maybe um, also uh, DAL-E is using a lot of parameters and a lot of computing power to produce these indeed impressive um, um, demonstrations. So my basically my question is how many layers and how many nodes or edges? Do you have uh, any idea or it's only rough? Is it like what? Uh, 10 layers or thousand layers or million layers? Is uh, it? Yeah, I, I, I didn't read the paper of DALI, so I don't know the exact number, but uh, they used they use the RTX 3090, eight of them for just inference DALI large model, and which is very similar computational request requirement for vision transformer huge or giant. And they are, the vision transformer huge use 24 layers and using about 2000 Python units. And mm. they are connected, they they has uh, about 1000 tokens and they are connected with, with scale or N scale uh, complexity. So mm. it costs about uh, two, Two, two or three teraflops per images. Mm. So yeah, it, it costs enormously. Thank you very much. This is really helpful quantitative background information. Further questions? Or maybe answers to the questions that we see here in the slide. Do you think AI is a scam? Do you think AI is currently, well, AI is definitely very fashionable these days. And will it be like a bubble? Um, so for example, in 2001, there was an internet bubble uh, uh, and it uh, burst. And then many uh, ideas and companies went bankrupt. So technological, um, progress tends to blow up, um, to inflate, and then to burst, and then start over again. So what do you think about AI? Is it going to last, or is it going to um, burst as a bubble? Yeah, maybe you don't really remember the 2000 internet bubble bursting. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yes. If I can answer that, I think that the AI will be used uh, uh, even more and more. Uh, but I don't know up to a point. I think that AI right now is a tool that goes far beyond computer science alone. 
and it will be a tool used uh, not just uh, in uh, the industries uh, as or in the automation as is asked there but also and we're seeing this in a more let's say humanities um, like uh, uh, music or uh, also art uh, but i think it will be used as a support and not as a replacement. I don't think that there is, uh, or there's not yet the capability of um, taking away the human from the equation. So right now, AI, I think it will go um, and develop in a form of an assistant and not a replacement. Thank you. It's a very good and reasonable opinion, yes. How about the second question? Where do we go? Is there going to be something maybe like revenge of AI someday or AI taking over? Okay, no, no problem. No, yeah. Uh, Peter, you already had, had, had uh, opportunity. Um, and anyway, this is going to be something you might want to write in the essay, uh, the assignment for part two, right? So these are great leading questions for you to answer in the next essay, right? So, yeah. Today, you, you had an, an, an answer. You wanted to say something, please go ahead. Well, if I may, yeah, I was um, going to answer the last question. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's important in the future. Um, like we will, we will do like we need to generate AI, but up to now, like very specific purpose AI. I'm so sorry, there's to... some kind of echo. Is there, can you somehow move, maybe move closer to the microphone or so, or turn on? Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Yeah, is it better now? Yes, yes, much better. Thank you. Yeah. So um, yeah, like like I said. At some point in the future, we might reach uh, the point of general AI, but right now, a uh, very specific purpose AI is, is really successful in what it's doing, but uh, the taking over of AI seems to be more uh, futuristic than real. And in my opinion, yeah, it, it would take a lot of time for AI to be more as intelligent as, as humans in like general way. And yeah, think about uh, they are taking over. Thank you. Very interesting. Okay. Further comments, remarks? If not, then let's thank uh, Heejun once again. Very well done. Good job. And uh, you will send the slides to me for uploading on the web page, right? And we will meet again on Thursday to hear about the philosophy of AI, right? And that's uh, going to be presented by Jeryong. Good. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. I'm gonna um,